Hello, O Morgan Studios. Today we are going to finally end this series on chord shapes for freestyle ukulele. Okay, just to recap, we had the triads over a bass note. Simple, right? Just know your caged major and minor chords, and you can flip them uh, if you know the formulas to all the other triad shapes, the minor, major, minor, diminished, augmented, suspended. Those are like triad shapes. Now, we're going to go and then slash, but the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven note on the bottom in the bass. Now, we're doing seventh over bass. You're probably already reading, it doesn't work, right? With a guitar, if you know your drop two voicings, you can do like a seventh drop two voicing with a different bass note and you can get ninths, elevenths, and thirteenth chords. Not so here because we only have four strings so it's like you have to do these real real long stretches. So as you see I thought we could say okay let's just use a shell voicing in place of your seventh like full seventh chord. A shell voicing is when you take out the five. Okay. And then you take out the five or you do a rootless voicing. You take out the one. The root is the one. Now here, what I tried to do is, okay, when you go and think about seventh slash chords, you have to ground yourself in the triad slash chords. You just have to know minor over four is a minor nine dominant nine and if you go minor seven over four you're adding a note that makes it 11. that's kind of like the next thing in the sequence seven nine eleven like that so if it was a ninth in the triad slash version it'll be an 11 in the seventh chord version okay Anyway, so I tried to do minor 7 over 4, which, be, which would result in a minor 11, dominant 11. And you see, it kind of worked here. I used the uh, A shape. And I did the 1, 3, 7, right? Right? If you, you can see here, I kind of was thinking about the A shape and my intervals. Know your intervals. I did the 1, 3, 7. And then I tried to put a four on the bottom and then five went down to four. You see little small little arrows there and it kind of works, right? I mean, it's just, it's a tongue twister for your fingers, but I think you can actually play that. But to go down the scale, the stretches just get too, too long. Okay. But wait, wait, we're gonna, we're gonna do something with this here. Okay. Try not to look ahead. Anyway, okay, so down here, I tried to do a minor major 7 over 2, right? Because the triad over 2 gives you an 11. So a major 7 over 2 would give you a 13. It's like the next step up, 7, 9, 11, 13. Okay, you see that here, okay? So I tried to go minor major 7 over 2. And as you see here, I got all these, like, this is a long stretch. This is like one, two, three, like four, like fret, like a stretch for the seven. And then the one flat three, I'm kind of doing a shell in my chord position. And then the root is the two in the bass position, chord over bass slash chord. Okay, I think that I beat that horse to death. So... Try to use it if you can, maybe use a different tuning or whatever, but that's it. So what you do, you try to use the chordal chords and chordal chords are just force. Okay. They're just strings of force, right? And ukulele, guitar, bass, it revolves around fourth intervals, especially the way, the way I tune it. I tune it low E flat, which is just the low G. And you kind of tune everything down two steps. If you're not familiar with that, go to my tuning ukulele video. Okay, talking too much. So, chordal 
chord here, right? Your major or your minor quarter chord, since we were talking about the minor seven, the minor seven quartal is just you go one, four, flat seven, flat three. It's almost a straight, just if you know the circle of force, one, four, flat seven, flat three, that'll give you, uh, it'll just go straight in the line, right? This flat seven and flat three, that's what makes it the minor seven quartal, okay? And then the four, that gives you your 11th. So that kind of gives you a minor 11th. So how you get the 11th chords, you can use, use your triad. Triad over two gives you an 11, right? You could use that, or you could just use the quartal, which I think is easier. It's less mental gymnastics. It's just force and just know your intervals and kind of figure it out. Okay, so you have your major, I mean your minor quartal, which is just using the flat seven and the three. And then you have, then you have your major seven quartal, which is the, the one, this is four, seven, three. The seven and the three makes it the major quartal. With the 11 though, major 11 is, it clashes. The three, four clashes because 11 is just like a four displaced an octave. So what people do is they use the sharp 11. So the family goes minor or major sharp 11 minor 11 dominant 11 that's how people usually use the 11th chord when they put it in a song okay so that's the major sharp 11 chord using the quartal it's kind of like your kind of fundamental kind of unit and lastly your dominant quartal is just your one four flat seven three okay flat seven three and the flat seven three makes it the dominant because the dominant is your third and your flat seven. And what you can do, if you can stretch your fingers, because really, if you're playing an 11th chord, you want that four in your highest top voice. So to do that here, if you just look at the little small arrows, you just flip the three and the four. You make the four a three and the three a four, okay? That may be a lot of mental gymnastics to try and kind of figure out figure out figure out but whatever's comfortable for you my strategy from until i figure out something else is if i if, if some if a chart says an 11th chord i'm gonna think okay quartal chord and then how can i kind of i'm gonna shift it around to get my 11 and then if it doesn't sound right i'll go to my major over two or minor over two to get my like 11th chord. Okay, so here that's how kind of you do your seventh over bass note slash seventh slash chord kind of family. All right, one more thing, one more thing. So let me go to this next page, right? Okay, so we were talking about shell voicings, right? So you know shell voicings, you just take out the five, okay? Fat voicings. P-H-A-T, people call them fat voicings, whatever you want to call them. So now, with the shell voicings, you can use the shell voicings on ukulele or any four-string instrument, in my opinion, if you use a reverse kind of slash mentality, right? Instead of thinking of a chord with a bass, with a note in the bass, you think of a chord with a note on top. OK, that's kind of like how you think with a piano, or at least when I when I think of a major seven on a piano, I think of the triad first, the one, three, five, like a CEG. And then I say, OK, I'm going to put a major seventh on top. I usually think of it that way on piano, but this is ukulele. Let's go down. So here we go. Major nine would be you just start with the major seven shell. OK, that's the one, three, seven. Right. Think about intervals, intervals, fourth intervals. The next after three, seven is three. One, well, seven, three, six, two, five, one, four. Okay, seven, three, six, two, five, one, four. That's the fourth sequence. So seven is three, and then you just go up to two. That's how I think about it. And there, there's your major nine. 
doesn't have a five in it, but you'll see if you just play a, a, a major nine with a five and then you take out the five, you don't lose any of the flavor, right? Okay, so that's the major nine. And then we kind of do a similar thing for the minor nine. We start with that shell, one, three, flat, seven. And then that's really a flat three because it the flats kind of follow the same sequence. Flat seven, flat three, flat six, flat five, like that. So you go do that and then you break it down. Okay, you lower a fret, make it a two. There goes your minor nine. And then doop, go up. Same thing for the dominant nine. You start with your shell dominant seven, which is the one, three, flat seven. And then same process, get the two. Okay. So that's your shell kind of with the way you can use the shell in terms of just flipping or putting a note on top. Okay. Let's go down here. Six chords. You can do a shell version of a six chord. You can just do a one, three and a six. You know, that's probably an easier way to than playing just a one, three, five, six, because that gets into those long stretches like we like we were talking about for the seventh chords for the ukulele. So try to use a shell. So if I see a six chord, I'm going to think, OK, a shell with like an extra one on it or um, I'll think of that. Um, what major over six kind of thing anyway. A lot of ways to think of how you can get a six, but use the easiest thing. The first thing that comes to mind, that's what you want to do because freestyle is all about having the vocabulary mentally in your head. So you don't have to go and reference things and you just kind of do things on the fly. That's kind of the, the kind of the freestyle kind of idea, but you do have to write things down every now and then. Now, you know, all this stuff we're doing here, kind of deriving stuff. That's for kind of like beginners, right? That's what, I'm kind of or intermediate kind of people, right? You, you, you know, some chords, but you're getting tired of looking in the book all the time. So you got to figure out a way, you know, just to kind of think about it, you know, but after you play it so many times, these shapes, they're just going to come to you, right? If you had a song that had minor major nines, I mean, all over the place and you were playing it for like a month or two, you wouldn't have to do all this. Okay, I need a shell voicing. Okay, let me put a nine on top and then oh, I need to clear. This is just, you know, when you're in the lab, right? You're you're at you're at the house, so you're at the studio, you're just trying to figure out stuff, right? It'll all come. You know, you'll just you'll just like those uh cage chords, those major chords. You I, I remember when I first started, I played those so much. I just, I was just noodling around and wasn't even thinking and my fingers just automatically went to like a C shape. That was weird. But anyway, uh, add nine, you kind of think of the same thing. It's not a shell, but you kind of use the major shape and then you kind of tack on the nine at the top. Major seven, this is another way to get your major seven. Just think about note on top instead of slash adding a note on bottom. I hope you can kind of understand what I'm getting at all right so that's it that's all we have oh last thing and then we're done last thing you made it through the end I know it's a long video so uh so what we're gonna do rootless okay when you think about the 13th I have this thing called the JB9 right these three these three here that's like the stab like to get to get to get to get to get uh super bad i'm super bad that is a, i just need to play it but see i'm just in the car making a video right now i'll, I'll fix it up later anyway jb9 those three notes stabs right if you have that then what you can do is all you have to do is add a note right this is like an upper structure kind of chord it's a ninth chord right it's a partial ninth chord. And what you're doing is you're just playing the, the kind of top notes, the three, flat seven, the two, and the five. Okay. And then this is a whole, well, that's a minor seven, flat five. That's the shape, right? Think about 
your D shape um, major seven, right? It's like, looks like that. And you just move them up. That's your minor seven flat five. So you can think of it, JB nine chord, that's a rootless chord. That's a dominant nine, right? You can think of it as this, this thing here, minor seven flat five over sharp five, or you could think of it as just the minor seven flat five on the three. Um, that's the way I thought of it very at the very first kind of, that's easier to me. Just take the third and then play a minor seven flat five on the third. Anyway, this is how you write it as a slash chord. Okay, almost there. And then the 13, what you do is you can use your fourth intervals. There go the fourth intervals again. Flat seven, flat three, flat six. So flat seven, three, six. That's kind of like the 13. People play the 13 like a dominant seven adds six. I see that a lot in gospel music. Um, I know there's a there's an instructional kind of video, a review video of a Lauren Hill. Um, it's a Lauren Hill concert, and the guy I forgot his name. I'll put it in the description below if I can find it. He's doing it. He he says the same thing. Dominant thirteen, and he goes says what? Oh, wait a minute. A dominant seven add thirteen. Anyway, add six. Six is a thirteen. Octave up thirteen. So anyway. So after that, what you can do, you can say, okay, my root's right there. So if you want to play, if this, uh, let's see, if you want to play a, a um, let's see, a C sharp, a C sharp major, if you want to play a C sharp, like a dominant 13 or C 13, right? You would go, okay, that's my C, that's my root note, C sharp. And then you just kind of play around it and don't play the root, rootless voicing. Okay. So if I'm thinking of a 13 or a dominant nine, I'm going to go JB nine. And then I'm going to uh, either go to this one or I'm going to go to this one down here. Okay. Okay. So that's it. So as, as in, su in summary, I'm done. I'm done. Summary, you know, if you know your triads, C shape, A, A, G, E, D shapes. And remember, if you can just morph the E shape, that'll give you the A and the D shape. And if you can, if you just know the G shape, that can give you the C and then the F shape is the E shape. So cage shapes, just know your E shape and the G shape. Typewriter, drifting, whatever. If you just move the shape over on the fretboard. Well, wait a minute. This is just, this is ukulele, but it still kind of works. Um, if you do three strings at a time. Okay, so there, you can know, you know your triads. Boom, I'm really gonna have to clean this up. This is just too much. Triads, you know those. After you get your triads, okay, you say, okay, I want to play a seventh or a sixth. That's the next family. Those are the drop twos and the shell voicings. And then the last kind of family is the extended chords, the nines, ninths, elevenths, and the thirteenths. To get those, you use your strat slash triads. You use the reverse slash, putting the note on the top, right? Your your shell plus your reverse slash plus your shell, okay? And then the rootless, okay? So that's kind of like, this is like your playbook for all of the chords, okay? All of the chords. No seven slash for ukulele. Just rely on the rootless and shell plus the top note okay that's it finish the series on just chords for ukulele have that on under your belt next we're going to do a series on scales and putting the chords with the scales and once we have all of that we can just go then and just get some songs put them together pull from our vocabulary of scales and chords that we just have internally not having to go to a book and then we'll just we'll be in freestyle mode okay Hope you learned something and I'll talk to you later.